hello, I'm Emma and today I'm going to be talking about every unread book I have on my bookshelves. I used to be a very good book purchaser. I would buy one book or I would borrow one book from the library and I would read it and that would be the only book I had for about a month or two. So I would reread and reread the same book about four or five times, especially when I was a lot younger. As I've gotten older and I've got a job and I've started to get more money, I suddenly started to like impulse buy books and that has never stopped ever since I was about 13. So not that I had a job at 13, but the impulse book buying. So I thought today it would be quite fun to just talk you through the books right below me that I still have yet to get round to on my shelves. And there is a lot. So without much further ado, let's get to it. So the first one that I have with me is Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. The reason why it's because I had a freak out around 14 when I decided that English was my thing. I'm going to go study that at university. I'm gonna take it at college. I just knew that English was gonna be my thing. But I was also aware that I was reading books that I really was interested in, books that pleased me. So as a 14 year old girl, there were books with a dreamy bad boy in it and quite cringy love triangles. Not the type of books that people are critically reviewing in university or people are actually studying in schools. So I purchased a couple of classics from a charity shop, read one of them, which was Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, hated it. And suddenly all the other classics I bought with them, I've yet to ever pick up. I also, another reason for not reading Jude the Obscure in particular, because I have since read Tess of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy, is because my English teacher at the time said I would want to like DNF it straight away. This is not one of Thomas Hardy's more pleasurable reads. This apparently is quite dark gothic and miserable so this is unread on my bookshelf who knows if it's ever gonna get read but for the moment that um, is that the next book i have on hold is the double comfort safari club by alexander mccall smith the reason why i'm looking so much at the cover is because I don't think I have even glanced at this book twice. I did not buy this, my mum did. My mum was born in Zimbabwe and she's always had this like real deep connection to Africa. She reads quite a lot of books that have an African theme and this is one of them. And I had a mission when I was younger that I was going to read every book in this household. And that is why this one is still around. The likelihood I'm going to read it is so slim I should probably hand this to a charity shop so someone else who also enjoys that African baseline within all of their fiction can pick it up and enjoy it instead because I do not see myself picking this up unless it is the last book in my house. So the next book which sits on my shelf for unread is The Plantagenets by Dan Jones. Now this has a dog ear in it because I have read the whole introduction but this was given to me by my great uncle? I don't think he's my uncle, he's my mum's uncle. And he basically said, because I was interested in history and there was a time um, where I was going to study English and history as a combined degree at university and that was my dream. But I've moved just to English because I realised the whole looking at sources and I don't know, there's some aspect of history that I didn't enjoy with pretty much all aspects of English I did. So I just thought there's probably gonna be moments where I'm just gonna absolutely hate the history section of my degree. So let me just scrap that completely. But before I came to that decision, my great uncle gave me this book. He said that it was a fantastic read and that I should really enjoy it if I'm into history and if I'm watching historical TV shows, that this is probably a really good read. It is huge really in depth and because of the size I've been too scared to ever pick it up because I knew if I started reading this I wouldn't be finishing it for about two years so the next book I have is 
a really cute edition of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I got this because I studied at A level English, language and literature as a combined course. I never did English Lit on its own, I never did English language on its own and I know so many English Lit students that read Frankenstein whereas English language and literature is a, like a combined course only read modern texts so we didn't have to battle with um, the context of Frankenstein but I feel like I am missing out by having so many of the people that I know having read it, experienced it, having to learn quotes from it, criticisms of it they're just, I don't know, I feel like they're one step ahead of me somehow so I thought my sister bought this, I've stolen it from her, she read halfway through and then just like disinterested so this is now mine I don't know when I'm getting to it my plan was this summer but considering summer's nearly up and I've not yet picked it up I don't know when I will be the next book that I have bought this was part of my charity purchase of classics when I was 14 is the three musketeers um by Alexandra Dern whoa Dumas now I thought this was a really cool addition because although it's an old book, it's got coloured pages in and I just I just thought it was fantastic. Like even if I don't ever read it, I'm going to keep it because I just think the illustrations in there for what is obviously a really old book is insane and I think it only cost me £2. Um, it was given to someone as a birthday present in 1954. So this has been around a while and it is going to stay. I just don't know when I'm going to forget reading it um this is pretty much the same thing as the oh, double comfort safari club this is a same the same earth by k miller i think that's how you say her name i'm sorry if i've mispronounced it um but again i actually purchased this one it was like a pound in waterstones there was an offer going on on this shelf i basically bought this for mum Mum wasn't interested, didn't want to read, so it's now mine. And again, this is based in Africa, uh, not in Africa at all, let me not get this wrong, in a small Jamaican village. And I think there's some sort of mystery going on. There's an adventure, there's a search for something. And it did interest me at the time when I was reading it. Ever since then, having read the blurb, it hasn't in the same way. Um, I don't know what impulsed me to buy it, probably the fact it was only a pound, but yes, this is still unread, still had it for many years since that purchase, and I don't know when I'm going to get to it at all. Um, the next book that I have, unread and still sitting on my shelf, is Wicked, the book because I loved the musical and I bought this because I was like, I'm going to read it before I go see the musical because I got bought tickets for my birthday. Um, and I bought this like a week before because I used to just fly through books. Now this book isn't like a horrible length. It's about 450 pages ish. But once I'd read, watch, once I'd watched the musical, I bought the soundtrack. I didn't really have a compulsion to read the musical I knew everything what was happening and that's why I haven't picked it up so I have just left it on my shelf I will get there it will be read eventually um this is actually different to some of the other books in which I do still want to read it I'm just not sure when I just don't know when it's gonna fit in with my life I think I should bring it along to a ne my, my next holiday I've got a break planned at the end of October so I'm hoping although I would have just started uni and who knows what I'm gonna be doing during that October half term if that is gonna be a chill week for me or whether whether I have got work to do so maybe maybe the next holiday i'll take this along the next book i have on my shelf is um riches by megan cole doesn't this look like just a perfect trashy read now i do not mean any offense when i say a trashy read i mean a book you can just read in the sunshine on a sun lounger by a pool that you don't need to think too much about that is going to be entertaining and fun quite light-hearted and it's not going to have too much substance 
but I don't mean trashy in a bad way. I love myself a trashy novel. But I bought this with the the same Earth book um, because again, this was in the bookshelf. The offer was for a pound. I saw it, I was like, that's gonna be an easy holiday read. Let me put it down in the checkout and purchase it. So that has, again, with the same Earth, not been picked up since I bought it about four years ago. But probably along with The Wicked, if I went for a holiday, I would read it. I'm sure I wouldn't hate it. I don't think it would be my favorite book in the world, but bought it. It's sitting there, it's waiting to be read. Next unread book I have is Far From The Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. I need to get some classics under my belt. I've read a few, but really not that many. And I'm aware that doing English at university probably means you need to read some of them. Um, I don't know whether or not I'm just being really naive or stupid by pushing them all away until I have to read them. But I bought it for the same reason. This is actually like quite new. This is, I think I'm the first owner of this book. Or I believe my friend bought it for me. I think this was given to me by a friend who knew that I was trying to read classics. So I think she bought this for me. Um, either way, I'm not interested in reading this at the moment at all. So we shall see, we shall see. I know there was a film and a TV show done of this book. So maybe if I find a rainy day and I watch them, I might become inspired to pick up the book or I might be forced to by a class or seminar, but who knows. The last um, book I have on my first pile of unread books is not really a book at all. It is a collection of poetry. This is The Bees by Carol Ann Duffy. I thought this would actually extend my A-level studies because the poet that we studied for A-level English, Literature and Language as a combined course at my college was Carol Ann Duffy. I think there was about four poets we could choose from. And I got into the poems quite a lot. I quite liked taking them apart and trying to analyze them and like figure out their deeper meanings. Not that they always have to have them, but I just really enjoyed that aspect of my course. So I thought purchasing a, another copy of her poetry would, you know, give me an idea of her writing style. I bought this second hand on a, um, on Amazon so it is filled with like someone else's notes which I guess could be quite distracting but I thought that could be quite helpful as well if I'm going through this on my own and not necessarily as part of a class or with anyone else to restudy really it with me. Never got around to doing it because A-levels actually bit me in my buttocks but there we go. That's that. I then have this book, which is slightly different to all the other books on my shelf in the fact that I have half read this one. This is uh, my copy that I got from a charity shop of Great Expectations by Charles um, Dickens. Oh, I just, I think this book is such a bore. I literally did not enjoy it at all. I got to chapter 22 and I just DNF'd it. I got so incredibly bored by the book. I did not enjoy it whatsoever. I didn't understand half of the plot. I didn't understand half of the language. Um, and I feel essentially like a failure for like not ever finishing it. But I, I am determined one day to pick it up and to finish reading it. I feel like it should be finished if I've started it and I dedicated so long to trying to get through it. It's just about when and where, why. I just don't know about it, but I've kept it just in case I do finally pick it up in the future. I also have on my not read is Know Your Road Signs by like AA. Um, I do need to learn to drive. I think it is a life skill and I do understand many reasons behind people wanting to do it. I used to argue quite a lot that I wouldn't learn to drive from an environmental perspective, which would be like, I would use public transport where I could or I'd walk if I can't, cause I can't ride a bike. But my mum 
didn't necessarily hint, she pretty much forced the idea upon me by buying me this and then like a theory book for my birthday when I turned 16 so I could be ready for when I could take it when I was 17. Come 18, I still haven't picked up the road sign book, have picked up the theory book only just last week. So who knows, maybe you will see me driving around on the streets. Maybe you won't. We'll see how committed I am to actually learning it. I also bought Othello by William Shakespeare. The reason why, again, being that I feel like I'm missing out on some of the analysis and skills attached to if I did English literature as its own separate A-level. So, because I knew the people at my college were doing Othello, I think they did a streetcar named Desire, Frankenstein, and then Never Let Go, I believe, and then some poetry alongside it. But I picked up, because I'm like, if I read it, and if maybe if I like read some like, annotations other people have done or I watch videos on it then I can understand and then when I get into that classroom or that like seminar I guess for uni and everyone's going oh my god that's like Othello or like oh when I studied Othello I can be like ah, I know what you mean ah, yeah I get that yeah I understand instead of me sitting there in the classroom going I did not study that and I feel really thick for not knowing so yeah that's why I got that. Again, time is running out for me to be doing all of these things in preparation for uni, but there we go. I also have um, 1984 by George Orwell. I bought this because my English course were doing The Handmaid's Tale, and obviously that's a dystopia. She wrote the book, I think, in 1984, and she was interested and inspired by George Orwell's book in particular along with a couple of others so I thought by reading it again that I would enhance my English A-level experience never got around to it see these are all really good intentions I just never did them um and I am actually interested in picking this up I don't think this is going to be an unread book for all too long but it's just a matter of when and where and how I get to reading it but that is that and it is on my shelf of unread books we are coming down to the last four. So in fourth is Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Now, Jane Austen comes from my hometown um, and she, I think, has a nicer writing style than some of the other classical authors in the sense that I feel like I won't struggle with it too much. I've watched which I know is different to reading, but I've watched the Pride and Prejudice adaptation by the BBC, like the TV show version, and I loved it, but because I've watched that, I don't feel compelled to read Pride and Prejudice. And I got bought this again by a friend of mine who knew I was going to start reading classics when I was 14. Four years later, still haven't done it. Um, but this is there, and I feel like, should I have to pick up a classic? This is probably going to be one of the first ones I go to. I have, and I really shouldn't have, this should definitely be in a charity shop because I'm never going to read it. This is Blossom Street Brides by Debbie McComber. This is a book following three women. They meet at their local knitting store. Um, and they find strength in their problems together. I think one's got relationship problems. I don't know, I think they all have relationship problems and I think it's just three women, they're troubled, they aren't happy, they find happiness in each other and knitting. It seems really sweet and wholesome and a book that your mother would read, you know? Not necessarily an 18 year old girl, but, I just don't ever see myself picking it up. I mean, maybe on holiday, this could be quite fun. Again, I don't think it's one of those books that requires too much brain power to understand. There's no otherworldly magic systems or politics or anything that nitty gritty. It probably will explore 
like families and relationships and loves and like be like an emotional potentially read but I just don't know if it's gonna pull on my heartstrings and I just don't know if I'm gonna be interested in it but mum bought it never read it said I could have it I have not read it the last two books we're nearly there um the first one is Dragonfly in Amber by Diana Gabaldon. This is obviously the second book in the Outlander series. I love Outlander the TV show with a passion. I'm on season four, which I know dropped ages ago, but I really do, I don't watch that much TV. I really don't. And it's really rare when I have the TV to myself for long extended periods of time. And I don't have the Amazon Prime app, so I don't actually watch as much Outlander as I want to. Um, but I got so obsessed with season one. I read Outlander the book. Um, this is the second book. And as you can see, she's a little bit of a heifer lump. Like, she's cute, she's chunky, she's a little bit um, thick. And that terrifies me. Cause I just don't know how fast I'm gonna be able to read it. This again, I probably need a solid year to read. So I've, plowed through with the series and then haven't finished the books so this is sitting I think I will really enjoy this though and this will go into so much more depth than the tv show which is what I want it was why I so much loved the first book but it's just when am I going to have a year of my life where absolutely nothing is going to interrupt me reading this never so unless I take a gap year after uni or I drop out and then questions are asked that I don't answer and I go into hiding, I just don't see myself finishing it off for a while. I will get there. I will get there. And the last book on my to be read, never have read, have sat on my shelf to rot for years shelf is a book I stole from high school. Now, I am a little bit of a teacher's pet, yeah? Um, when it came to English in high school, my class in particular seemed to be getting mucked around quite a lot with what teachers we were given. I think I had five like four teachers maybe in the last like couple of years of English and I was just not here for it because I felt like we were the first year of the new GCSEs like the ones being marked one to nine and as a result I felt like people weren't taking it as seriously as I was because I was like I'm a guinea pig the grade boundary is going to be all over the place I might not get the grade that I want it's a subjective like test anyway it's it's how good someone else thinks my writing could be absolutely rubbish compared to my own opinion of my own writing so I was a little bit deviant in a really quiet subtle way that was not loud and outspoken at all and I think the majority of my classmates never noticed but I did not do a single bit of the actual lesson for like two years of English I was on my phone looking at different extracts of the text. I was reading um, critics comments that the teachers hadn't given us links to. I was watching videos online. I was reading like A-level like examples and I was trying to read through practice essays on the text that we were covering at the time. So my school did Jane Eyre if anyone was interested. But when I left, I had to return something to one of the teachers who wasn't in their classroom. So I left what I had taken, which I can't remember what it was now, but I left what I had taken in her classroom, but also in her classroom was the English cupboard, filled with multiple copies of books they'd done in the past and would probably revisit. Like the books that are always on the syllabus, but they had chosen something different for my year. And I think now my sister, she's in two years below, they've changed again to something else, but I took from that cupboard on the last week of school the study guide addition to the great expectations of this is not a proud possession of mine but I 
got this and I took it and I thought I would give it with my sister to hand back when the summer was over because this was during the time where I was struggling through um, Great Expectations, the book. And I thought, you know what, if you get the study guide edition, it has the book all in there and there's like, I think there's sections that like explains when certain themes in that pop up. I was like, this will be great. You can use it, you can like, try and read along and try and understand it better and maybe you won't find the book so taxing but i never picked up great expectations again and as a result i never even bloody used this so i just feel a tiny bit of guilt a tiny bit not as much as i probably should have for having taken this um, I mean, it was only six pounds when the person bought it. So, how guilty I actually feel is questionable, but this is on my shelf and I thought I should mention it anyway because it is untouched, it is unread and it is rotting on my shelf. So, there we go. That is all my unread books on my bookshelf. I have a ton. For any of you who are wondering what books I actually have, I don't have bookshelves anymore. I know it's confusing because I just said I have one. All the books here I keep on a shelf. It is not a bookshelf. It is hidden in one of my cupboards and where I keep all my red books is in that cupboard. I'm happy to go over all the books I actually own fair warning spines are cracked they're not pretty hardback covers this is not a booktube channel but i do really love english i love reading i love writing i love talking about books and i thought this would be a great place to start this as a hobby but so these are all the books i haven't read i'm happy to go through all the books i have all my favorite books books i'm, books I'm angry got discontinued or etc etc but Thank you for watching. If you liked, please like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share if you want. Let's get my platform growing. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.